Good morning. Robert Davis back with you. This morning we're going to look at uh, some Python for Delphi in action uh, based on the tutorial we did uh, just a few days ago, maybe a week or so ago, um, and built our Python interpreter in Delphi. So let's go ahead and look at that. We'll come over here to Delphi and we'll open demo project one. Let me move some stuff. And here we have the interpreter that we built and we used, um, we changed the, uh, this memo field to a sin at it and then dropped on the uh, sin at Python behavior and the uh, uh, send Python send component. And then we had the Python engine and the Python GUI output, input output. And this is what we got. And you see, uh, we can do this execute script. And it gives us four like it should. Okay, so let's see Python for Delphi in action. We'll load a script. And it's in... Uh, Python and AI. Okay, and let's look at... Uh, let's look at this upper function real quick. It's always interesting. Um, a lot of times when you're comparing two strings that should be the same, uh, it doesn't get that because of capitalization or case, character case. So in this example, what we're doing is going to use the upper function to do the comparison of two strings, text one and text two, and see if they're the same. So um, let's do this execute script. And we see the strings are the same regardless of case because of the upper function is being used to compare the two strings. So, <clears throat> but let's add like an extra zero and then execute the script. The strings are not the same. So it's not the case that matters. It's the spelling in this case. So we'll get rid of that. Execute the script again. Strings are the same. So that's a nice way. Um, for instance, uh, emails and URLs uh, on the internet in your browser and then on the web servers that you're hitting, they all uh, resolve to lowercase characters for the whole string so that um, they can be matched up properly uh, regardless of the case that you type in. So there's no, no need when you're typing in emails or you're typing in uh, URLs web addresses. There's no need to be using the shift key for anything because they all resolve to lowercase. Okay, let's clear the script. Nice job there. And we'll load another script. Uh, here's the uh, here's the FizzBuzz algorithm. It's really kind of interesting. Um, if if the input is divisible by three and divisible by five, you get fizz buzz. If it's divisible by three only, you get fizz. If it's divisible by five, you get buzz. And we return the input. So we'll take some samples here and check these out. 
and you see for fizzbuzz3 it gives you fizz because that satisfies this this uh, argument so fizzbuzz5 gives you buzz because that's divisible by 5 and fizzbuzz9 gives you fizz because it's divisible by 3 and not by 5. And then fizzbuzz15 is divisible by 3 and 5, so it gives you fizzbuzz uh, return. 7 is not divisible by any of the conditions, so you just get the 7. And then, of course, 105 is divisible by 3 and by 5, so you get fizzbuzz. That's the, uh, it's the famous algorithm. And you've got to get this if ladder right. Uh, you don't put, let's see, what we do if we bring this down to here and try this. Uh, you don't get the right result. Um, <clears throat> let's put this back. Well, I just cleared this. Let's go to another script. Uh, here's a simple dictionary creation in Python. And uh, recall that Python is a top-down, line-by-line interpreted language. So we've got to define this function, save user, uh, first, and then call it. So here we go. And you see we get this uh, list, or the dictionary list in Python. And that's one way you could save some data about an object, the user. Clear that. Uh, whoops. Load script. And we'll look at, uh, here's a famous rock, paper, scissors game. And you can play against the computer. So I'm going to say, execute script. I'm going to say rock. I won. Let's try that again. I'm going to say scissors. I tied the computer. I'll say paper. Tied the computer again. And try scissors again. I won. So you see the code here. You got to import random because we're using the uh, random choice. And uh, <clears throat> but it's just that simple. And uh, you can play this game all you want. Let's clear this. Load the script. Uh, here's a dog object, a little object oriented program for you in Python. Here we declare a class of the dog. Remember, it's top down, so you got to declare a dog before you can instantiate it or use it. So you declare that at the top or near the top, at least before you try to instantiate it or use the dog class. So we define uh, self, name, age, weight, color, and we set those to variables. And uh, then we instantiate the dog with my dog equals dog, and sassy is her name. She's 10 years old, 69 pounds, and brown in color. And then you get this information printed out for you. 
So let's run this. We're going to test whether or not that's my dog. So we instantiate that and execute the script and we see the name, uh, age, color, and weight are printed for you. And I'm going to say uh, black. What color is your dog? Black. She is not my dog for sure. So let's run the script again. And we'll say yellow. We'll mix case it. What color is dog yellow? She is not my dog for sure. And this again calls on the upper function or um, the actually lower function for uh, my dog color lower. And then we'll execute the script again and we'll say, I'm mixing the case up so you can see that it doesn't matter. What color is the dog brown? She's very likely my dog. Okay, there's some more action. Let's load another script. Oh, this is interesting. Weight conversion. Um, we'll uh, go ahead and execute this script. It's just some multiplication and division conversions that you do. I got these values off the internet. And so we'll execute the script and it uh, wants to know uh, your weight. So I'll put mine in. And whether it's kilograms or pounds, and it's pounds. So here we get my weight in pounds, which I put in no conversion needed there and then in kilograms which um, it uh, converts the weight uh, times points or point four five and then weight in stones which I'm preferring these lower numbers <laughs> uh, but that's how it works so we can do the opposite, kind of try to remember what those values are in pounds, kilograms, and stones. We'll execute the script again, and I'm going to put in 124.65 for the weight, and that'll be kilograms. And you see we've got weight in kilograms. Uh, is that so it brings us to 77 and we get very close to the weight in stones so uh, there's that let's see if there's another script of any interest um, here's a greeting function here we uh, define the function get greeting and remember, again, it's top down, so you've got to define the, the function first and then call it. So I'm going to say, what's your name? And say, Chris Kringle. I don't know if case matters. Let's, we'll try it. Uh, yeah, it does matter. I didn't do the upper or lower functions, so we'll execute that again in proper case. Oop. And it says Merry Christmas if it's Chris Kringle, or execute it again. And we'll put my name in. It just says Good day, Robert Davis. So there you have it. Python in action. It's a simple language. It's easy to use and um, it's growing in popularity every day. It currently presently in the world. It's the most popular computer language 
uh, out there right now that even eclipses Java and um, C++, C Sharp, those kinds of things. So, I hope you got a little bit out of this, how simple it is, and using your little interpreter, uh, Python or Delphi, and getting some use out of that in learning Python code. And that takes care of it, and I'll see you in the next video. Again, I'm Robert Davis. I've enjoyed my time with you, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks so much. Goodbye.